From the Cube Studios in Palo Alto and Boston, connecting with thought leaders all around the world, this is a Cube Conversation. Hello everyone, this is Dave Vellante and welcome to this Cube Conversation. We've got a really cool company that we're going to introduce you to. And Anthony Brooks Williams is here. He's the CEO of that company, HVR. Anthony, good to see you. Thanks for coming on. Hey Dave, good to see you again. I appreciate it. Yeah, cheers. So tell us a little bit about HVR. Give us the background of the company. We'll get into a little bit of the history. Yeah, sure. So, uh, you know, at HVR, we are changing the way companies route and, and access their data. And, you know, as we know, data really is the lifeblood of, of organizations today. And if that stops moving or stops circulating, well, there's a problem. And, you know, people want to make decisions on the freshest data. And so what we do is we move, uh, you know, critical business data around these organizations. The most, uh, you know, predominant place today is to the cloud, um, into, uh, you know, platforms such as Snowflake, where we've seen massive traction. Yeah, boy, have we ever. I mean, of course, last week we saw the Snowflake yeah. IPO. Um, it's, you know, the industry is abuzz with that. But so, so yeah. tell us a little bit more about the history of the company. What's the background of you guys? Where'd you all come from? Sure, um, the company uh, originated out of, out of the Netherlands, out of Amsterdam, uh, founded in 2012, um, helping solve the um, issue that customers had of moving data efficiently at scale across a, across a wide area network. And obviously the, the, the cloud is one of those endpoints and, and did that for a company uh, such as the Dutch Postal Service, Personnel, where you know, today we now move that data to Azure and to AWS. But you know, it was really around how you can efficiently move data at scale across these networks. And, you know, I have a, you know, a bit of a background in this, um, dating back from uh, early 2000s, when I, I found out a company that, that did auditing recovery of SQL Server databases. And we did that through reading the logs. And so, uh, you know, then sold that company to Golden Gate and had that sort of foundation there in those, in those early days. So, I mean, again, HVR, you mean moving data efficiently as we can across these organizations with the, with the key aim of, allowing customers to make decisions on the freshest data, which we you know today is you know, really uh, table stakes. Yeah, so, okay, so we should think about you as, uh, you know, I want to invoke Einstein here, uh, yeah. move as much data as you need to, but no more, right? Because it's, it's, it's hard to move, move data. So you're a high speed kind of data mover at, at, at efficiency at scale. Is that how we should think about you? Absolutely. I mean, at our core, we are CDC, change data capture, moving incremental workloads of data, moving the updates across the network, you mean combined with a, a distributed architecture that's highly flexible and extensible. And, you know, these days, just that one point, customers want to make decisions on as, as much data as they can get. You know, we have companies that, that we're doing this for a large um, you know, apparel company that's, you know, taking some of their, not only their, their, their core sales data, but some of that IoT data that they get and, and sort of blending that together and giving the ability to have a full view of their organization so they can make better decisions. So it's, it's moving as much data as they can, but also you need to do that in a very efficient way. Yeah, I mean, you mentioned Snowflake. So what I'd like to do is yeah. take, my, take my old data warehouse and you know, whatever, let, let it yeah. do what it does, reporting yeah. and compliance, stuff like that. But then bring as much data as I need into my Snowflake or whatever modern cloud database I'm, I'm using and then apply whatever machine intelligence and, and really analyze it. So, so really that is kind of the problem that you're solving is getting all that data to a place where it actually can be acted on and, and turned into insights. Is, is that right? Absolutely. I mean, you know, part of what we need to do is there's, there's the whole story around multi-cloud and, and that's obviously where, you know, with Snowflake fit in as well. But from our point of view is it's supporting over 30 different platforms. I mean, data is generated, data is created in a number of different source systems. And so our ability to support each of those in, in, this, in this very efficient way using these techniques such as CDC is, is going and capturing that data at source and then moving it together into some consolidated platform where they can do the type of analysis they need to do on that. And, and obviously the cloud is, is the predominant target system of choice with, with something like a snowflake there in either of these clouds. I mean, we support a number of different technologies in there, but yeah, it's about getting all that data together so they can make decisions on, on, on you know, all areas of the business. So I'd love to get into the secret sauce a little bit. I mean, we've heard, you know, luminaries like Andy Jassy stand up at, at last year at reInvent. He talked about nitro and the big pipes and how hard it is to move data at scale. So what's the secret sauce that, that you guys have that, that allow you to be so effective at this? 
Absolutely. I mean, it starts with you mean, how you go acquire that data. And you want to do that in the least obtrusive way to the database. So we'll actually go in and we read the transaction logs of each of these databases. They all generate logs. And we go read those, those log, log systems of these different source systems and then put it through our, we have some secret source in how we, how we move the data and how we compress that data as well. So, I mean, if you want to move data across a wide area network, you mean, the technique that, that a few companies use, such as ourselves, is, is change data capture. And you're moving incremental updates, incremental workloads, you know, the change data across that network. Um, but then combine that with the ability that we have around some of the compression techniques that we use and, and then just into a very distributed architecture. That was one of the things that, that made me join um, ATU after my, after my previous experiences and seeing that how that really fits in today's world of real time and cloud. I mean, those are all table stakes things. Okay, so it's that change data capture. Yep. But now, of course, you've got to initially seed that, that target. Uh, yep. And so, so you do that, if I understand it, you use, you use data reduction techniques so that it's, you're minimizing yep. the amount of data. Uh, and yep. then what, you, you, you sort of, you, you use uh, asynchronous methodologies, dial it down, dial it up, you know, in off hours, how, how does that work? Absolutely, exactly what you've said there, I mean. So we'll go in and we'll go, initially there's an initial instantiation or an initial load concept where you're taking a copy of all of that data that sits in that source system and replicating that over to that target system. You turn on that CDC mechanism, which is then moving that change data. At the same time, you're compressing it, you're encrypting it, you're making sure it's highly secure and loading that in the most efficient way into that target system. So, so we either do a lot of that or we'll also work with if there's a you know ETL vendor involved that's doing some level of transformations and they take over the transformation capabilities of loading. We we obviously do you know a fair amount of that ourselves as well, but it depending what is the architecture that, that's in there for the customer as well. Um, the key thing is though what we also have is we have this compare and repair um, ability that's built into the product. So we will move data across and we make sure that that data that gets moved from from A to B is absolutely accurate. You mean people want to know that their data can move fast, they want it to be efficient, but they also want it to be secure. They want to know that they've got peace of mind to make decisions on accurate data. And that's some stuff that we have built into the product as well, supported across um, all of the different platforms as well. So something else that just sets us apart in that as well. So I, I want to understand the, the business case, if, if yeah. you will. I mean, is it as simple as, hey, we can move, we can move way more data faster, we can do it at a lower cost. What's the business case for you guys and the business impact? Absolutely, so you mean, the, the key thing is the business case is, you know, moving that data as efficiently as we can across this so they can make these decisions. So, um, biggest re online retail in the US uses us on their biggest, busiest system. They have some other, you know, standard vendors that are in there, but they use us because of the, the scalability that, that we can achieve there of, you know, making decisions on their financial data and all the transactions that happen between the, the main e-commerce side and all the third party vendors. That's us moving that data across there um, as efficiently as they can. And for us, we look at it as a, you mean, they, they pretty much, it's a subscription base and it's all connection based type pricing as well. Okay, I want to ask you about pricing. Yeah. You know, how, I mean, pricing transparency is a big topic in the industry yep. today. So how, how, do you, how do you price? Let's start there. Yeah, we charge a simple per connection price. So what are the number of uh, source systems? A connection is a source system or a target system. And we charge them very simply, but we try and keep it as uh, you know, simple as, as possible um, and charge them on, a, on, the, on the connection. So they will buy a bucket of five connections. They have three source systems, two target systems, and it's, it's pretty much as simple as that. You mentioned security before. Uh, yeah. you, you, uh, so you're encrypting the data, so you, data in, in motion's encrypted. Yeah. Uh, uh, what, what else do we need to know about security? Yeah, you mean that we, we have this concept in how we, in how we handle and, and uh, we have this wallet concept and, and how we you know, integrate with the standard security systems that those customers have already in, the, in those architectures. So um, you know, it's something that we're constantly doing. I mean, there's, there's the data encryption at rest, um, and initially, we, you know, we, the whole aim is to make sure that the customer feels safe, that, that this data that is moving is, is, is highly secure. Let's talk a little bit about cloud, you know, you, and maybe the architecture. Are you, you're running in the cloud, are you running on-prem, both, across clouds, how, well, how does that work? Yeah, yeah, all, all of the above. So, you mean, what we see today is the majority of the data is still generated on-prem, and, and then the majority of the talk systems we, we see are 
are in the cloud. And this is not a, a one-time thing. This is continuous. I mean, they've moved their analytical workload into the cloud. You I mean, they have these large events a few times a year and they want the ability to scale up and scale down. So we typically see, you I mean, right now, you know, analytics, you know, data warehouses, that type of workload is sitting in the cloud because of the elasticity and the scalability and the reasons the cloud was, was brought on. So absolutely, you know, we can support the, the cloud to cloud. We can support on-prem to cloud. I think, you mean, a lot of companies are adopting this, this hybrid strategy that we've seen certainly for the foreseeable next, you know, five years. Um, but yeah, absolutely. Source, you know, the, the, the source and target systems can sit on-prem or in the cloud. And, and where's the point of control? Is it wherever I want it to be? Is it, is it is absolutely. one of the clouds on-prem? Yeah, absolutely. You can, put that, you can put that point of control where you want it to be. You know, we have a concept of, of agents. These agents sit on the source and target systems, and then we have the, let's say the HBO brain, the, the, the hub, that is controlling what is happening, this data movement. That can be sitting with the source system separately or on the target system. So it's highly extensible and flexible architecture there as well. So if something goes wrong, it's the HVR brain that helps me recover, right? And make sure that I don't have all kinds of data corruption. Maybe you could explain that a little bit. What happens when something goes wrong? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, we have things that are built into the product that, that help us highlight what has gone wrong and how we can correct those. Um, and then there's alerts that get sent back, you know, to us, to the, uh, to the end customer. And there's been a whole bunch of training and stuff that's taken place for them, what actions they can take, but there's a lot of it is controlled, you know, through the through the HVR core system that 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 handles that. And we are working, you know, next steps are as we move more into a, as a service into a more of an autonomous data integration mode ourselves, which have a, a bunch of exciting things coming up. That just takes that all to to the next levels. Right. Well, you guys, you, Golden Gate Heritage, you sold that to Oracle. They're pretty hardcore yeah. about things like things like recovery. How, how, Anthony, how do you think about the the market? Uh, the total available market, you know, kind of, can you take us through your opportunity broadly? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, there's the, there's the core opportunity of the space that we play in is, is where customers want to move data. They want to do, you know, data integration. They want to move data from A to B. Um, there's those that are then branching out more to moving a lot of their business workloads to the cloud on a, on a continuous basis. And then where we're seeing, you know, a, a lot of traction around is particularly data that resides in these critical business systems such as SAP. That is something you were asking earlier about what are some core things in our product. We have the ability to, to unpack, to unlock that data that sits in some of these SAP environments. So we can go and then decode this data that sits, um, whether it be, you know, in these cluster pool tables and combine that with our CDC techniques and move that data across the network. And so particularly, you know, sort of bringing it back a little bit, what we're seeing today, people are adopting the cloud, the massive adoption of Snowflake. I mean, as we see their, their growth, a lot of that is driven through consumption. Why? It's these big, large enterprises that are now really to consume more. We've seen that tailwind from our perspective as well. It's just taking these workloads such as SAP and moving that into something like these cloud platforms such as a Snowflake. And so that's where we see the immediate opportunity for us and then, and then branching out from there further. But I mean, that is the core immediate um, you know, area of focus right now. Okay, so I, I, we've, we've talked about Snowflake a couple of times in other platforms, and not the only one, but they're the hot, you know, the hot one right now. But yeah. when you think about what organizations are doing, they're trying to really streamline their data pipeline to get to, yeah. to turn raw data into, into insights. So, you know, you're, you're seeing, you know, that emerge in organizations, that data pipeline, we've been talking about it for quite some time. I mean, Snowflake obviously is one piece of that. Your, where's your value in that pipeline? Is it, is it all about getting the data into that stream? Yeah, you, you just mentioned something there that, that I mean, we have an initiative in, in, internally that's called raw data to ready data. Yeah. And that's about capturing this data, moving that across, and that's where we're building value on that data as well, particularly around some of our SAP type initiatives and, and solutions related to that that, we, that we're bringing out as well. So one, it's absolutely going and acquiring that data. It's then moving it as efficiently as we can at scale, which a lot of people talk about. We truly operate at scale. The biggest companies in the world use us to do that across there and giving them that ability to make decisions on the freshest data. There, there, therein lies the value of them being able to make decisions on data that is a you know, few seconds, few minutes old versus some other technology they may be using that take you know, hours, days. Of, I mean, that is it, keeping you know, large, Companies that we work with today, you mean, um, you know, keeping toilet paper on shelves. You mean, one thing that happened after COVID, you mean, one of our big customers was making them be able to their fulfillment process and making the shelves are full. 
um, uh, another healthcare provider, being able to do you know, analysis on, on what was happening on supplies from the, the hospital and, and the other providers during this COVID crisis. So that's where it's a lot of that value, helping them, you know, you know, reinvent their businesses, drive down that dig digital transformation strategy um, is, is, is the key areas there. You know, no data, they, they can't make those type of decisions. Yeah, so I mean, your vision really, I mean, you're betting on data. I always say, don't bet against the data. Uh, yeah. but, but really that's, that's kind of the premise here is the data is going to continue to grow and, and data, I often say data is plentiful, insights aren't. And you know, we, we use the, the bro mind you said before. So, so yeah. really maybe, maybe you could summarize the vision for us and where you want to take this thing. Yeah, absolutely. So we, we're going to continue to build on what we have, um, making it easier to use. Um, certainly as we move, as more customers move uh, into the cloud. And then from there, you mean we have some strategic initiatives of, of looking at some acquisitions as well, just to build on around offering in some of the other core areas, but ultimately it's getting closer to the business user. Um, you know, you, in today's world, you mean there are as many IT tech savvy people sitting in the business side of the organization as they are in IT, if not, if not more. And so as we go down that, that flow, um, you know, with our product, it's getting closer to those, to those end users because they are at the, at the forefront of wanting this data. As we said, the, the data is the lifeblood of organization. And so given that ability to, to drive the actual power that they need to from the data is, is a core part of that vision. So I mean, we have some, some strategic initiatives around some acquisitions as well, but also continue to build on the product. I mean, there's, uh, as I say, you I mean sources and targets come and go. There's new ones that are created each week and new adoptions. And so we've got to support those. So that's our, that's our table stakes. And then continue to make it easier to use, you know, scale even quicker, more autonomous, those type of things. And you know, you're working with a lot of big companies, the company's well-funded, if, if Crunchbase is up to date, uh, over $50 yep. million dollars in funding. Um, give yep. us the update there. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, company's well-funded, you know, we're on a good footing. Um, obviously there's a lot of, it's, it's a very hot space to be in. Um, you know, it's, with COVID this year, like everybody, we, we sat down and, and looked in sort of February and said, okay, well, let's have a look how this whole thing's going to shake out and get, get plan A, B, and C in, in, uh, in, uh, in, in action. And we've sort of ended up with plan A plus, you know, we've done our annual budget for the year. Uh, we had our best quarter ever in Q2, um, you know, we're 193% year over year growth. Um, and it's just, I mean, the momentum is just there. I think uh, large, I mean, obviously it sounds cliche, a lot of people say it around digital transformation and COVID, absolutely. You know, we've been building this engine for a few years now and it's really clicked into gear. And I think projects due to COVID and things that would have taken nine, 12 months to happen, they're sort of taking a month or two now. It's been getting driven down from the top. Yeah. So I think all of that's come together for us, very fortunately, you know, the timing has been ideal. And then tie in something like a snowflake traction. As you said, we support all many other platforms, but all of that together, it's just, it's set up really nicely for us, fortunately. Yeah, that's amazing. I mean, with all the turmoil that's going on in the world right now and all the, all the pain in many businesses, it's, I can't, I, I tell you, I interview people all day, every day, and the technology business is, is really humming. So that's awesome to hear that you guys, I mean, especially if you're in the right place and data is the place to be. Anthony, yeah. thanks so much for coming on theCUBE and, and, and summarizing your thoughts and give us the update on HVR, really interesting. Absolutely, I appreciate the time and the opportunity. All right, and thank you for watching everybody. This is Dave Vellante for theCUBE and we'll see you next time.